Welcome to Uncopyable Women in Sales. If you're looking for actionable insights and real world tools to turbocharge your sales starting tomorrow, well, you're in the right place. Your host, Kay Miller, earned the affectionate nickname Muffler Mama when she sold more automotive mufflers than anyone else in the world. In this podcast, Kay will talk to another superstar woman in sales as they reveal uncopyable strategies you can use to rack up more leads, snag dream clients, and take your sales numbers through the roof. Stay tuned and get ready to make more sales. And how about this? More money. I'm super pumped to welcome today's guest, Katie O'Neill. Katie is someone I've gotten to know personally, and I can't wait to chat with her. Katie has spent her sales career in the high-end automotive industry, and she's earned a whole bunch of top sales awards along the way. In 2020, because of COVID, she decided to buy an RV, which led to a switch to RV sales. She now works for TransWest RV in Frederick, Colorado, where she sells top-of-the-line RVs and is consistently one of the top sales producers in the nation. Katie, thanks for joining me. 100%, Kate. Thanks for having me. I'm so honored to be on your program. Now, Katie, we have chatted a little bit before, and I've been so impressed. I couldn't wait to have you on the podcast. And you are one of the recommendations from our buddy, Joe Snyder, at Freightliner mm-hmm. Custom Chassis. Is he awesome or what? He is awesome. There's no other man on the planet that is as fun to learn from as Joe Snyder. He's a really inspirational guy. He, he really is. And mm-hmm. so supportive of, of women and men. Of all mm-hmm. salespeople, of really all people. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being a woman in an obviously male-dominated industry. And, and how has that affected you? What, what Can you speak to that topic? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm always looking for, uh, you know, a way to make myself unique. I'm always looking for a way to um, stand out in a crowd and in a uh, industry, uh, whether it be automotive or RV, where a majority of the sales associates that you're working with are men, um, it's that's a great you know first step in being unique. Is uh, really you know women approach things differently. We are a little more empathetic. Uh, we listen. Uh, we also uh, convey knowledge differently and um, gather information differently. And I think. Uh, being a female in an industry that is uh, male dominated gives you an edge. I think it's, it certainly is, you know, you don't necessarily need to go look for a place where there's a bunch of guys, but if you find one that you like and um, you can, you know, really hone in on your craft and stand out uh, for your knowledge base and, you know, gain credibility in that industry, I think you have a huge edge because you're unique. Uh, you don't blend in with everybody else who stand out. Right. And you, and you did say that there is kind of a line where you use your uniqueness as a woman, but you don't really, I don't know how to say it, use your sexuality, I guess. You're yeah. still super professional. And especially since we just talked about your moose, which of course, from the uncopyable philosophy in the books, uh, your moose is your target market. And you mentioned that your moose is actually women. So can you explain that? Absolutely. Um, In my industry, um, a lot of times, you know, and this is automotive or RV both, um, there is a like for things that are shiny and fancy and have lots of wheels. And, um, you know, a lot of times, especially in the RV industry, I've got guys that have been you know, dreaming about whether it be an upgrade or um, their first RV or you know, the change into a different type of wanderlust, you know, where they're going to explore the country or where they're just going to do it in a different fashion. Um, they're doing research online and they're watching videos and they're looking up specs and they're participating on forums. And a lot of times um, they need buy-in. And my goal is to be an approachable source for information that conveys the value of the products we carry. Um, it conveys the functionality of them uh, and the benefit to them uh, so that they can then in turn take that information and say, hey, honey, take a look at this RV. I think you'll really like it. 
Um, so for instance, um, my hashtag is hashtag Arby's inside out. Um, I start from the inside of the RV. I don't think that, you know, wastewater tanks are very interesting to majority of uh, the population. Like I think that they don't care how the sewer works. Um, they, they know it's probably going to work because it's obviously, you know, a pretty sizable investment. Um, but they want to see, you know, is it comfortable? Does it have the layout for the living room that I like? You know, do I like the, you know, quality of the cabinetry? Are, you know, are, you know, my appliances up to par for what I'm hoping for? You know, is it going to keep me warm at night? Um, does it get me the places I need to go? So I'm really trying to approach um, the function and the utility of the coach in a way that, you know, somebody can bring it over to their partner and say, hey, take a look at this video. Um, and I don't want the husband um, to bring the, you know, video over to his wife and have her say, well, that's because her skirt goes up to, you know, her knee. <laughs> it, it, that's, you know, like I, I want, I want the, I want everyone to feel comfortable with the fact that the reason I'm being chosen uh, to present this product is because I have good information. I'm very knowledgeable. I'm professional and I'm informative and approachable. Um, and I think too hot is too much. Too hot is too much. That's right. Um, well, you mentioned video and really you are, I don't even have to say it, the queen of video. Um, that's how I was first introduced to you when Joe said, check this gal out. I went to RVs Inside Out, which you can search Katie and it will come up everywhere. Uh, one of the first videos I saw, your videographer, I think Jody, right? Yeah. Is knocking on the door of the RV and walks in to find you like str sprawled out on this top bunk. I mean, just <laughs> tastefully you know, sprawled out, tastefully <laughs> really sprawled out, tastefully sprawled out. It is like you said, it's totally appropriate. It's just so likable and real and vulnerable. And, yeah. you know, I, I just wanted to, to talk again about how did you get to the point of being so good on video? And I'm also going to ask you about how you describe these RVs in such oh, of detail. Yeah. Um, so first and foremost, I think um, I'm a big fan of, of owning what you're selling. You know, so if you, you know, like an Audi, you should have an Audi. If you're selling an Audi, you should have an Audi. If you're selling a BMW, you should have one of those. Um, I have, uh, I'm on my third RV. I built my first RV in 2014 um, on a Sprinter chassis when I worked for Mercedes-Benz and Sprinter. And um, we had it for seven years. And when we traded it in during COVID, we got to one of our larger RVs. Um, I went online and started looking for videos and I found Matt's RVs and he was the guy, you know, and I was like, gosh, this guy is so informative and he's funny. And I sent him an email and I called him and I said, can you make an RV video for me of, um, you know, these ones that I'm looking at? And I didn't get any response for him. And um, I was like, gosh, I, you know, I, I don't really know a lot about these things. So I would look for videos. And um, the way that I approached the videos and the reason I was up there in that cab over bunk area is would I fit there? You know, I, I need to know, like, I'm trying to show you I'm trying to anticipate the questions that you're going to have and provide answers for you before you can ask those questions. Um, and, you know, functionality is key. Um, and being approachable in that functionality is also key. You don't want to be robotic. You absolutely need to make sure that, um, you know, if it's too polished and unapproachable, I don't, I don't think that it, you know, no one wants to buy a Hollywood RV where, you know, when you get to the real thing, it doesn't work. You actually want to be able to uh, go into that purchase knowing uh, that you've seen that product in motion and that it's going to work for you. And if I can help convey those answers to people or help them understand that maybe it doesn't work, um, that's that's just, you know, another that's just another point on my side. Right. Um, and when, and uh you talked about the fact that when you first started doing video, you weren't very good. And now no. you're really a master. So how did you force yourself to get started doing that? Well, I, I knew um, the day that I interviewed for the position, um, I actually called the sales manager, told me I could work here um, and said, I'd like to schedule an interview with you. you know, are you available? 
And he said, no, I don't have um, any, you know, board meetings this afternoon. I can absolutely work with you. Um, and I thought that was kind of funny. So he was being cheeky. And I really liked um, our management team here, which is one of the reasons I thought I could work here. And um, during the course of the conversation, I said, I want to make a video every day. I want to make hundreds of videos. And I already knew that I felt like there was, again, that unique place in the marketplace where there's a hole um, that people would really feel um, inclined to watch videos on these products so that they could learn why they would choose one over the other. Um, and so when they gave me an opportunity to work here, I was absolutely mortified about making my first video because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and how, so did you, I, how did you get over that fear? That's what I wonder. How did you get over that fear? I watched other people's videos and I researched and I, and I looked at every, it didn't even matter if it was a product I was doing a video on. I watched and I saw um, people's, you know, videos and, and, and took in and said, okay, I like this aspect of the approach, but I don't like this aspect of the approach. Um, you know, this is good information to me. I mean, honestly, I watched videos yesterday uh, on a product that I'm very familiar with that I actually owned um, in 2020 for, you know, a, good period of time. And I'm still watching videos about that product to see what's out there and what my competition looks like and what I consider to be, you know, am I missing something? Is there information that this other video that I watch might be conveying or is, is there false information out there? You know, what's my competition look like? And then what do I need to present to my clients about product information so that they're getting the most out of my videos more than they're getting out of anybody else's? And, um, you know, I, I learned and um, I think, you know, it, it made me a better sales associate. It informed me about my product. Um, it, it forced me to become comfortable with stats that I didn't know offhand. And I have a template that I use um, for every video. And um, I start 30 minutes later than everybody else at the store. Um, so everyone's videos are at 10 o'clock and mine are at 1030. Because on Monday morning, coming off of the weekend, I want to make sure all the information is fresh in my head. And I go through and update my template for each and every RV. Um, and so I can look down at a piece of paper and see, you know, that I'm, I am on the right track. You know, yesterday we had a question about length and I had the length, the height and the widths all written down and was able to just make sure I could glance down and provide that information accurately. Um, because I'm doing a live video and a guy chimes in and says, hey, here's a you know, tech spec. What's the answer? And um, being prepared, I think, uh, has made me very comfortable because I feel like I know what I'm doing. I mean, well, I, feel you, I feel confident. You definitely do. And I know even one of the uh, RV manufacturers has recruited you to do some of their videos. I don't know if you want to talk about the brand name, but um, I've been impressed with your knowledge. But maybe even more uh, impressed by how you take a feature of an RV and not only turn it into a benefit, but turn it into a relatable benefit that actually transfers to somebody's life from here's where you can keep your curling iron to here's where you can put aside a venison if you're hunting or camping equipment. <laughs> How many people in your family might want to watch TV versus play a game? I mean, I just think that's brilliant and and really connects to the audience being seen. Yeah. Well, and I think it, it's the same way with all products, right? You know, so you can have, um, you know, Apple CarPlay in your car and you, someone can say, hey, here's dude, this car has Apple CarPlay and then you leave it at the door. Um, well, that's not benefiting me a whole lot. You know, why did, why is it important that, you know, Numars installed Apple CarPlay on their, you know, chassis uh, moving forward in 2023. Well, it's really important because when you're driving something, you know, that's, you know, 40 to 45 feet long and 13 feet tall and 95 inches wide uh, down, you know, the freeway, wouldn't it be cool if you could, you know, just have your trackless playing and your voiceover navigation stuff with Google going at the same time? as your uh, RV navigation so that you know, you know, everything that's going on without having to look around and look down. You know, so, you know, talking about how things um, benefit people as opposed to talking about a basic feature um, and then integrating that into, you know, your, your you know, pitch, I think really makes a difference because at the end of the day, 
people might not think about why something is going to be important to them. Um, and I think it's really important to cover not just what it has, but why it matters. And um, if you can differentiate once again and create a uniqueness in your product, you may be able to make your product the only choice, and not because just I'm a sure choice, but the sure choice. Yes, yes absolutely. Right. How much different, like you said, is it to say, oh, this has Apple CarPlay to extend out and talk about all the things that that means to the customer? Mm -hmm. And of course, you are an RV owner. So I know that you spend an inordinate amount of time studying the stats and, you know, learning as much as you can. But you can also say, yeah, I'm an owner. And when my family's camping, here are some of the things that we do or that we like. So your yeah. your videos just accomplish so much and some of them are and maybe an hour long i mean you're very thorough most of them are an hour long yeah, yeah. and you know what they're they're freaking entertaining so i'm going to put a link to a couple of them or look for rv's inside out and you will be really impressed uh, the videos i'm sure draw people in one of the things i notice is that you have a big call to action in every video. You hold a clipboard up that has your phone number on it. It says, call me. And you frequently say, call me. I will help you. I will answer the phone. And you do answer the phone. Mm -hmm. And if you don't answer the phone, you call right back. So you have a promise of what you're going to deliver. And you act, you definitely deliver on that. Um, yeah. I also want to make sure we cover your own mantra, which I've heard you talk about several times. And I asked you, do you make that promise to the customer ahead of time? And you said you absolutely do. So tell us about what your personal mantra is. Well, you know, it's funny. It was derived from, you know, a pretty weak moment in my life uh, and some pain and uh, some just not being very happy. Um, and I was driving to work one day and I thought, you know, how do I get out of this like just cycle? Um, I'm not happy. And, uh, I thought, you know what, that's not making it about me. I'm going to approach my day so that every single person, because I knew I had this power. I, I knew that in working, uh, in a field where I'm selling, you know, at this point in time, it was Mercedes. Um, people were out there doing research and they needed good information. And I decided that I was going to make sure that everybody that I met would walk away better for having met me than not having known me at all. Uh, whether that meant through educating them about how credit worked and whether it, you know, it had to do with you know, talking about affordability and not overbuying or whether or not it was talking about how to, you know, when the last thing that you put on when you walk out the door is your car. You know, it's the first thing people see when you pull up to the front of a building. How do you want to appear to other people? Um, you know, so translating uh, what I was trying to do, which is, of course, to, you know, to capture another sale, to move on to the next transaction, you know, is always important. But if in doing something kind for others, you're going to find success, um, I think that you'll be much more successful. You know, if you stop making your own personal um, objectives, you know, the, the most crucial point, become of service to other people um, when you actually become compassionate. When you embrace people, they become part of your family. Um, they become part of your your core group of people that you know on this planet. And you're trying to do your best by them. I think they feel that. And um, I tell people all the time, listen, this this might not be the product for you. It's okay. If you've had, you know, a good day and you've and I've helped you educate yourself and We've gotten you to the point where you, you know, have a better understanding of, you know, what you might want to consider going forward. Then we've won. Just tell other people about me. And and if you've got a friend who's interested, you know, in the product that I carry, share my phone number with them. And, um, you know, I think that that really translates to people um, that you're being, you know, genuinely kind and considerate and compassionate towards not your own self, but of their lives. And I think that when you look and strive to make other people's lives better, yours will just, you know, innately, you know, follow that, that same path. Today's podcast is sponsored by the acclaimed book, Uncopyable Sales Secrets, How to Create an Unfair Advantage and Outsell Your Competition by Kay Miller. 
Put the secrets in this book to work, and you'll make more sales, grow your network, and become a top earner. See the show notes or go to Amazon.com and search for Uncopyable Sales Secrets to order the book right now. One of the biggest problems that salespeople have is, you know, be, having a fear of rejection, fear of hearing no. And you have really defined what success is, not by whether or not you get the sale, but how, you know, you make that person feel, uh, what the, the end result of that relationship is. Um, and of course, it, it's a wonderful attitude to have, but <clears throat> face it, you are also super successful in sales. So you draw people in with your videos. You obviously have this mantra. You, you promise them that you are trustworthy. Um, but take us a pro through the process a little bit of how you are showing, uh, showing whatever, representing these RVs and helping someone discover not only which one is the right one for them, but whether or not this even is the right one. Absolutely. Um, so I, I think the most important thing, and so I see a lot of folks that will say, you know, uh, we have, we have internal, uh, dialogue and lingo and every industry has their own language, right? So if we have what's called a walk-in, it's somebody who has walked into the dealership and they're looking for RV salesmen. So you'll get a phone call and says, we have a walk-in. And so I'll come over and I'll tell my customer that they're a walk-in. They're like, what does that mean? So I, I like to kind of like dispel, um, you know, the, the shroud of, you know, the dealership right from the onset, you know, just let people into your world, let them understand what's going on so they can feel comfortable. But I don't walk outside with people ever first. I, you know, if I'm across the street um, near our lounge, we'll go sit in a lounge. If I'm over here at my office, we'll sit at my desk. Um, but the first thing I do is ask questions. Um, and I don't sell anything. All I do is inform and answer questions. I present options and my clients make their own decisions and they purchase what they want because they've been empowered to uh, understand the product and the process and the cost and they're comfortable and they're ready to move forward. And that's at every single aspect of the sale. Um, so in the introduction, you know, what's, how many bathrooms do you need? You know, where are you going to camp? What do you currently own? Um, you know, how are you going to use this vehicle? How many people will be with you? Um, you know, do you like having company over? Uh, so all these questions, you know, help you to gain insight as to what to show people. And then after you get through all of that, you know, don't be afraid to say, you know, what, what are you, what's your budget? What's it? Are you paying cash? Are you making payments? Do you understand how RV loans work? I mean, the, all of the things I think that we try to avoid as salespeople because we're afraid that when I tell someone that, you know, your payment's going to be thirty two eighty six a month and you're going to have to put $120,000 down to get there, they might run for the hills. But at the end of the day, don't you want that information up front anyway? Like, you know, if somebody says, you know, planning on living in my RV and I've got $50,000 and I want to buy a van, you got to ask more questions like, okay, where are you going to live? Do you need water? Um, you know, how are you going to power your vehicle? You know, there's, there's so many things because the truth of the matter is somebody might be able to do that. They might be that type of camper that can pull it off. But a lot of people uh, don't understand, you know, what the limitations are of, your, of my product and my responsibility is to make sure that they do understand when they come in here, um, you know, what we offer. And I don't want to sell them anything. I want them to understand what's available, what it costs, and whether or not it's something that they want to move forward with. And at the end of the day, we can still be friends if it's not the right product. If, if I don't have what you need, I'd rather know that up front and help get you down the road in the right direction. Or I'd like to prevent you from spending tens of thousands of dollars on something that's going to be a mistake. Because this goes back into, again, you know, when you take money from people and you and you take their hard earned efforts and you translate them into something that's going to make you a commission and it really puts them in a financial bind in a bad situation, um, you might win in the short run, but it, it, it's just very short sighted. You know, being kind, I think, is so important. Uh, and I, yeah, I was going to say that I think people are afraid to ask, you know, what is your budget? But you 
again, it's not just for your benefit, it's for their benefit, along with all these really specific questions about how they see themselves using this RV. Like you said, are they going to live in it, camp in it? But when you say, (laughs) what is your budget, then that's saving you from wasting your time and them saving themselves from wasting time. And again, either having a plan for the future that they can look forward and work for, toward work or towards, yep. maybe put on your dream board. Yeah. Yeah. Have a dream board. So you're really helping them uh, see their future. Again, you're great at helping people picture their future and getting them to where they want to go. Yeah. Um, there are a couple things that you've talked to me about before that I really want to cover. And one of them is what you call exposure sales. And it's helping people through decisions in a really unique way. So can you just briefly fill us in on that? Absolutely. Um, so it's kind of something I've coined myself. And, and it's not through trying to identify, you know, how I operate. Um, I just know that it's kind of what I do. And I'll tell clients, I'm going to drag you around the parking lot. We're going to go in a million different things. You're going to ask me a bunch of questions. And I'm going to watch your reaction. And uh, a lot of times, you know, absolutely, you've got to, um, again, listen. Uh, the customer always needs to be heard. Um, you know, so it's very important to ask your clients those qualifying questions before you ask them their budget, you know. Um, but after you have kind of a feel for it and you know that you have some ideas as to what you think might be a good direction, exposing them to that product and then watching their reaction, you can gain so much more information. Um, I have a client that came in. Um, there's this is their second visit. Um, they're here from Vegas. They flew in this weekend. Um, and the funny thing is, is the first time I met uh, this couple. Uh, this was through video sales. Um, they came in to meet with me because they, had, you know, once again, husbands watched 280 videos, <laughs> and the wives watched three of mine. You know, um, so yeah, very, very much. You know, my moose. It's it's that that guy who's trying to get his wife to buy in, and she's actually been like, okay, I can do this. And uh, when I met her, she said she wanted, you know, white cabinets. So we walked through a ton of RVs. And uh, over the weekend, we identified her perfect dream RV and we found a nice dark medium tone wood. And it's not even close to white. It's not even the the lighter or the darker gray. It is brown. And, um, you know, and, and it's great. And so they came back for the second time. And we walked into all of the coaches again and we, we talked about, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And she came back to the same conclusion the second time. So this, uh, again, exposure sale, you know, she had already gone through the whole first process. They had left, um, they had shopped, you know, there's a bunch of dealerships out in Vegas um, that are big and uh, still elected to come back here. And the first thing I did is say, okay, let's let's just do this again. Let's walk through all of these um, RVs and make sure that, you know, we're coming back to the same information. And I didn't have her order that we put together the first time with me. Um, I literally wanted to see if she came back to the same conclusion. And she did. And she knew she did because we went back across the street and I said, here's the stuff that you picked today. And this is what you picked last time. And it was cool because I didn't have to reaffirm her decisions for her. She reaffirmed them for herself by being exposed to them. And in doing that, was able to really hone in and identify exactly how she wanted to spend their next $700,000. And, um, you know, when you're asking for that kind of money, um, it's important to make sure that you're not saying you should give me this much money for this product because I think you're going to like it. It has to be the opposite way. It has to be, I want to give you this much money for this product. I know I love it. And uh, that's, you know, you get there through exposure. That's really important. Right. And, you know, people don't always know what they want. Um, You are the expert in the RVs. And I remember one video you were talking about propane versus gas and and people read things on the internet. You know, there's so much information everywhere, but it's not the whole story. It doesn't relate to them and their situation. And you often end up, you know, having customers pick something 
very different than they originally expected. So you are leading them through that process. We talked um, in our one of our other conversations about the Henry Ford quote. Um, if you ask, Henry Ford said, if people, if I, you know, how does it go? If I asked people what they wanted, they would say, uh, how does that go now? I'm, I'm messing it up. Oh, um, I, I don't know that quote. So. Oh, yeah, Henry Ford. If I'd have asked what people wanted, they would have said, faster horses that's what it was right that's right yeah, i remember so you, they I, don't even, yeah, we did have this conversation yeah they yeah. don't think about the fact that there's a car they don't even know what's out there so you just do a fabulous job of educating people and uh giving them really something better than they would have imagined well and i think one of the things i'll tell clients when we have that initial talk about because I mean most of my clients about 70% of my product is sold out of market so a majority of my clients um I you know I've got a client that's in Virginia that delivered this month I've got one out of Texas I've got these folks that came in through Vegas um I have uh two local sales um you know so they I got a majority of my clients actually come from out of market and one of the things I tell them is I, I need to meet with you because I need to listen to what you think you want and I need to poke holes in your theories and I need to have you defend your uh, your presumptions so that we can make sure that you're getting the right product for you. Because honestly, until you've had somebody who's willing to stand up and say, are you sure that that's really how that's going to work for you? Because I think that this might be something else worth considering. I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't get any pushback or consultation um, from your sales associate or your, you know, you know, if, if you're buying what you want without any kind of consultation, you are literally working with a cashier. Consultation yeah. requires pushback. You're selling yourself short, mm -hmm. um, for sure. So, uh, we talked a little bit about your actual sales process once you're getting to this point of narrowing down what people want. And you mentioned something that we talk about in our books next step. So yes. how do you lead people through the next step, which makes it a much more pleasant and non-threatening experience for them and really leads to a, a better fit? Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so uh, one of the things I think that we tend to do when we're trying to, you know, close a sale is um, almost defeating to a client. In fact, I had a sales manager uh, that I worked with at Mercedes-Benz, and he would say, you need to put this in writing and tell them they have to sign right here that says, I will. And he had really strong language about what, um, you know, they were committing to. And I think writing things down is absolutely important. Um, but I rarely ask somebody um, to do anything more than go on to the next step. So uh, at the end of, you know, this meeting that we had this weekend, uh, what I said is I'm going to send over a DocuSign so that we can put a deposit together uh, and order the product. And, um, you know, at that point in time, you know, understand, would you like to put down five or $10,000 uh, towards that deposit? You know, because of course you get the points on your American Express card for travel. And the response was, well, you know what, let's just do five for right now. Okay, well, guess what? There we are. We're at our next step. Um, the deposit's 100% refundable. You know, please understand that as we go through this process, you know, we're going to order the coach and when it arrives, you know, if the timing's not right, we need to order another one that's going to come in at a later point in time. That's okay too. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to this next step. And um, what ends up happening is after you've turned on that negotiation switch and people have put a deposit down and they've taken ownership you start to get excited. Um, and so you still need to continue to nurture that relationship and to give them the opportunity to make that next step. But I tell all of my clients, you know, we're going to order the coach. It's going to take several months. The coach is going to arrive. You're going to apply for financing. We're going to get you pre-approved. Uh, you're going to know what your interest rate is up front. You'll know what the monetary down is required. We're going to send you over sample contracts and all of your warranty information. Any of the additional products that we carry, whether it be a windshield product, uh, we also would be happy to provide you with a complimentary insurance quote so that you can contact your own insurance company and compare it against what you're being given 
So we'll help you to shop that policy to make sure you're getting the best policy. And then you're going to, you know, come up with all of this information. So we get you pre-approved. We'll get you a specific payment. And if at that point in time you're comfortable when your coach arrives, you're going to fly in um, or drive in, whatever it is, if you've got a trade in. And you're going to go through an orientation. And even during that orientation, you are still not committed. You're just taking that next step. The only point at which this becomes final is after you decide to sign your paperwork and that you're going to sleep in the coach that night. Um, so at no point have I defeated the client or required commitment or said this is, you know, not uh, undoable until now, until I actually get to the end. And um, I think that's huge for a lot of people because a lot of people, you know, when they're signing up to spend, you know, whether it be $25,000, um, you know, I've got a car in order that's coming in right now. I'm still like, gosh, is this going to be a big payment? Is it something that I'm ready to do? I know that it's it's a refundable thing. So I'm going to wait for it to come in. I'm going to take a look at it. And let me tell you, when I sit in that seat and I know how much the payment is, I promise you one thing, there's a very strong likelihood I'm going to move forward. But if it's not right, if it's not right for me, if it's a bad time or if it's too much, I mean, isn't it better that I don't move forward? I mean, and that's that's what you have to afford your clients is the same way that you would hope to be treated. You know, if they get down to the brass tacks of this and it's just too much, cut them loose. You know, gosh, you know, take care of that human being. You know, be kind to that person. Don't make them feel bad. Don't hold their feet to the fire. You know, understand, turn around and sell that, you know, very special, very unique product to somebody else. Um, and make their dreams come true instead. You know, take that power that you have in an in individualized product and, and don't be afraid to say, hey, this is why this is such a great thing. We designed this and it didn't work out for that client. You know, when you tell someone that, not only does it benefit them to know that they're getting something that's unique and that's been, you know, ordered by someone else, it also allows them to kind of feel comfortable that if they're in the same situation, and it's not good for them. You're also going to let them out too. Um, so they can feel comfortable in taking that next step. You know, oh, you you have, are, you're really building trust with them. I mean, you're yeah. giving them such a non-threatening way to move forward. But by telling them up front, hey, you are not committed through this whole process. I'm going to help you, uh, you know, reserve the coach that you want. And then we'll learn as much as we can about it. But telling them up front that you are not obligated uh, till the very end is, you know, so I'm sure a relief for all of your customers. And I know that you have a huge segment of customers that return to you and referrals. Uh, mm -hmm. So that speaks to the service and just the way you operate. Do you ask for referrals? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, so how, how do you do that? Because I think a lot of people are afraid to ask for referrals and even recommendations, reviews, all that kind of stuff. What so, do you do about that? Um, I'm going to show you something. And I know that we talked about some key points, um, but I have a list of favorites here. And right down here at the bottom of the, my favorites is, is my, oh, I'm calling myself. I don't want to call myself. <laughs> it's my contact card. So my contact card has all of my contact information. It has our address. It has um, my TTTRV uh, hashtag for the dealership, as well as RVs Inside Out hashtag for YouTube. It has my cell phone number. And what I'll do is I'll go into this contact card when someone says, do you have a business card? And I'll hit share contact. And when I hit share contact, I select all fields that I'd like to have relevant. And then I... Um, go ahead and I and I bring this up and I'll send it to them via messenger and I'll put their phone number in here and I'll text that contact card to them. Um, so I would really cool. encourage all of you to make your own contact cards uh, on your phone. And okay, the reason and I, I didn't even, re I have never done that. So yeah, so it's a huge benefit. So what is it benefiting me? So I'll give you an example. I had a guy come in the other day and he was looking for what we call as a diesel pusher. Um, they tend to be, you know, an average sale price is probably four or $500,000. And he was looking for one that was $70,000. And I said, <laughs> you know what? But it was great because we talked about what was important to him, what I was looking for. And I told him, I said, there's a market out there for you. You know, you're going to have to buy something that's, you know, quite old and used. And are you looking forward to getting to certain parks? Because there are age restrictions on those parks. And we did. We poked holes in some of his theories. And it was um, enough of a meeting 
even though I was so far away from what I was looking for, where he was like, you know what? Do you have a card? And I said, yeah, let me, let me give this to you. And he had already given me his card. I said, I can just text it to this number right here. And he goes, oh, that's a landline. Let me give you my cell phone number. <laughs> so when you are texting someone your business card, uh, your goal is to say, here's my cell, here's my business card. Let me text it to you. And then you can say, do you mind if I just take your phone? So if you just click on this contact card now that you have it, um, in fact, here, I'll just send this right now to Kay Miller. So, and I think I've already done this, Kay, but if it's redundant, I apologize in advance. No um, problem. So Kay Miller now has received my contact card. Oh, and some pictures from last night's concert. <laughs> uh, and so- Yeah, you were up point. really late last night and you still rallied and made it to our interview. Good for you. Make it till you make it, baby. <laughs> uh, so, so after I click on that contact card, I hit create new contact and I hit done. And I've done this in their phone. Um, now you can't always be that much in control of your, um, of your process, but God willing, if you can say here, let me just show you how to save this and you save your contact, which by the way, my contact is Katie RV O'Neill. Right. And, the and I, that you know, is, I'm going to oh, mention look at where that. I'm sitting. Do we, do we, do we see a scene here? We see it. We see it. And I'm, for those of you not watching, yes, it says Katie RV O'Neill. And, and that is your handle pretty much everywhere, right? That is my handle. And I am sitting in front of the same sign. Uh, that says Trans West with the mountains in the background that I'm sitting in front of doing this video interview with you today. Um, and so I text this over. Uh, it's a professional picture. It's, you know, um, in their phone now. And if they type in RV, I'm going to pop up. And I tell them all, oh, share my contact card. Hand it out like it's candy. I don't care who you give it to. Um, even if it's just to answer a simple question, even so I have clients that'll literally give me like their parents will call me and say, well, we have this, you know, travel trailer and we're looking to, to sell it. Where would you sell it? Now, this is something I don't, you know, I don't deal with that type of product, but I give them feedback and information because at the end of the day, it comes back to being kind and to enhancing people's uh, lives by having crossed your path. You can help someone else help them. You right. know, just, you, just because you're helping someone doesn't mean it has to help you, you know, because it all does come back to you. But but mm -hmm. you do then become a resource. And I love the way I mean, not aggressive, but kind of aggressive about sharing your information. Like I said, in every video, here's that clipboard with your number and multiple times you say, call me. But, you know, you have this manner that all the things that you are talking about really comes across. Again, yes. I encourage anyone listening, you've got to check out Katie's videos showing these fabulous RVs. And if you're in the market for one, like Katie said, all over the country, it doesn't matter. She works with people everywhere. And um, am I right in saying that you even not personally, but these RVs are delivered to where people live? Oh, we can deliver them. I, I have to fly in if I do it in outside delivery. Um, I always encourage people to come in and do their deliveries here in person because of our program and, um, you know, our, our staff here and the support that's provided to us by, uh, you know, George and Barb, who are the owners of this company and all of their family members who, you know, their, their son-in-law is our general manager. Um, my manager, his father's worked here for decades, um, you know, and his brother's a service technician, you know, so this is a very much a family-owned company. And I think that the service we provide here is better, but I've had clients, for instance, fly out, do their orientation, and then we'll have their product delivered to them. And I fly out to hand over the keys. And, um, you know, I had a manager, uh, I delivered a coach to Florida last week or last, uh, last month. Um, and my client flew out to Belton, which is our uh, sister store. And he said, you know, we can handle the delivery. You don't need to fly out. And I said, this guy's spending a lot of money. I'm going to fly out. and I'm going to kiss him goodbye and watch him drive off in the sunset with his wife. And I'm going to you know, I picked them up in the hotel and brought them down to the RV. And, you know, it, it's these little small things, though, that will make me, um, it, it, in my opinion, the person that he goes to. I don't want you to think of Trans West uh, when you want an RV. I want you to think of me. Um, you, I want to have your yeah. own brand. And yes. I have to say, you know, I know you're a big fan of the Uncopyable Philosophy. Yes, 100%. Uh, the book. And you really have made yourself uncopyable. And on this podcast, 
have given us a ton of specific ideas that other people can do. Um, whether or not they will do them or not, I don't know. That's up to them. If uh, I if I could leave with anything, Kay, because I know you asked me to come up with something earlier, um, make that business card. Get that uh, digital contact card uh, made so that you stop handing out pieces of paper for someone else to write, you know, a phone number to bar on the back of it and leave it in their cup holder. Um, right. Get that right. digital get that digital business card out there because you're checking to make sure that you're also getting someone's correct contact information. Um, right. Because so that card won't too. go over. Yeah. Yeah. You, you right. won't see it if it's not if it's not accurate. So. And in the show notes, just for anybody who's super low tech, I will put um, I'll have you sh- tell me exactly how to get that done and put that in the show notes. Yes. I asked you for specific things that people can do and we have wow come up with a ton and you have even more we don't have time on this podcast as i said i would love to have you back and talk about other things that you do like the time that you spent an hour looking in the mirror to study your own reflection and how you come across to people i mean you just have so many nuggets and Your success is very, very well deserved. Well, and, and Kay, you can put my cell phone number down there, um, or they can find me at TTRB um, or Arby's Inside Arby's Out. Arby's Inside Out. Yeah, and if they, if anyone wants to text me and say, "Hey, make me a contact card," just shoot me a text. Ask me to help you make one. Um, I make them for people all the time. I run into uh, sales associates that I like, you know, in in my life. If I'm buying a car or something, and uh, I bought a Subaru for my daughter, and I looked at the sales associate and I said, geez, you know, Jake, you're, you're a great associate. Here, let me make you a contact card. This is how I'm saving you in my phone. Let me give it back to you. Save it in your phone and hand this out. I'd be happy to make a contact card for you. Um, and like I said, let me cross paths with you. Let me make your life better. Um, Kay, you make so many lives better through these podcasts. You know, I, I think you do the same thing that I do just in a different way. And I was so flattered when you emailed me after one of our conversations and said that I made your life better. And yeah. that, that's a great, I mean, you know, karma, baby. And just yeah. the right way to live. I know you've got some very strong faith and ethics that you build into everything you do. Yeah, Katie, thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for being you. <laughs> you yeah. are such an inspiration. And of course, I greatly appreciate you being on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Kay. It's been an absolute pleasure and I would love to come back whenever you'd have me. Thanks for listening to this episode of Uncopyable Women in Sales, your source for secrets you can use to make more sales. Check the show notes for links and contact information. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please spread the word by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a five-star review. You can always learn more by going to uncopyablesales.com slash podcast. Until next time, go out and supercharge your sales like a true uncopyable rock star.